Hi, this is Bernard Koenig, BK Solutions, and I would like to show you what a typical attic looks like in a house which has been built roughly around 1920. So, uh, 1920 there was no insulation available, um, so those homes had actually no insulation at all. And then in the 70s, things changed because suddenly we had the first oil crisis and people started to add insulation in the attic. So, in this particular case, they did something in the past, but there is really not enough for these days. Clearly you can see, I mean, it's more dust and debris than anything else. Um, you have about two, three inches of insulation and uh, the estimated R value for such a construction is uh, about R6, R7 at best. Um, under the floor there is already a bit something, but again not enough, it should be all the way up to the top. And uh, if they don't use that floor here for storage anymore, I would fill underneath it and then put another foot on top of it, because uh, labor cost is quite high in Westchester, so um, it makes sense to add more material in here and uh, just get it done once and right, and then uh, you're done with it for the next 40 years and you don't have to worry about this anymore because if you look I mean this is this is poor insulation and um, it's kind of sad because you spend so much energy and it's so easy to address such an area here. About that about 30% of your energy disappears through the attic. Um, this is this is uh, an area of opportunity, you know. The Department of Energy recommends we should have uh, an R value of R46 or better in our zip code area. I'm going to add about a foot, a foot and a half of cellulose on top of it. Before I do that, I'm going to first air seal, meaning I have to remove some of that material, find the top plates, electrical penetration, plumbing chutes and so on, and seal all that. And only then I'm going to start to install more insulation on top of it. Let's look at the model. So this is a typical attic floor. On the top you see the floor where you normally step on and store items. And uh, underneath it we have the cavity which we are going to fill with cellulose later on. And there is also the area which we need to air seal before we can dense pack those cavities. What I quite often do is um, I add a little partition wall on the side along the roof line and uh, that's an area you're not going to store items anyway and add there about a foot, a foot and a half of insulation. So we're back in an attic. This attic looks a little bit different. Um, it's, it has been insulated about 20 years ago. Unfortunately it has a design flaw. They went along the roof line uh, which is going to increase now the surface towards the outside compared to just going along the floor. Uh, but that's not the main issue. The main issue is that uh, once I step aside, you're going to see that uh, that this attic is, is vented. Um, so that two large vents on each side of this attic meant to extract any moisture that could be trapped in the attic. And we're going to maintain that. So uh, now we're going to insulate underneath the floor and uh, as you can see I also put up my little partition walls so that way I can add more insulation uh, along the roof line and uh, the remaining insulation gets blown underneath the floor. Okay, so let's get to work. Let me get my tools out and uh, address the issue. I'm going to put insulation underneath the floor. I put already a partition wall up all around and I can also submerge the air conditioning ducts with a foot, a foot and a half of insulation. The floor has been insulated with cellulose, we call this dense packing. And on each side I added a foot, foot and a half of insulation 
behind the little partition wall. So if you do have a house like this here in the Westchester area, don't hesitate to call me and uh, I got to improve it. <laughs>